Saudi Arabia, to a father who always taught me to reach for the stars, and a mother whose spirit I inherited. According to my dad, he always says, you and your mom, exactly the same. I don't know if that's a compliment or not, but I take it as one. And for the longest time, I was, <laughs> I was such an eccentric little girl. From the moment I opened my eyes, I was different, and I knew I was different, and I was surrounded by, by love and acceptance in my family. But as soon as I stepped out of the acceptance of my family, I was uh, pushed under the pressure of the social expectations of what a Saudi girl should be. I'm very proud to say that nowadays it's changed. But back in my time, there were lots of expectations of how a Saudi girl should be. So I tried to fit inside the teeny weeny little box that everybody wanted me to fit in. I really tried. But there was something inside me that was so wild and wanted to go out there and just be as bold as I've always dreamt of. So I couldn't stay inside that little box. And I reached a crossroads in my life after deciding that I won't conform and I won't fit in anyone's standards. I reached a massive crossroad in my life. And this crossroad is something that almost every single woman reaches. It's a specific age that we hit and we have two choices. And this age is different from family to family, from culture to culture, from background to background. But every woman has this in her life where she reaches a point where she has to choose. In my case, it was, a few, it was a few years ago, and on one hand, I had this this pull, this calling, this sense out there that I was destined to go beyond even my own craziest dreams. And the other option was the more traditional lifestyle of going from wedding to wedding, waiting for Prince Charming to inshallah come and sweep me off my feet and <laughs> ride across the sunset. Now, ladies and gentlemen, like. I don't mean this in an insulting way because I would love that. One day in my life, I would love to have that. Prince Charming and riding off, I would love that. But at that specific time in my life, I wasn't meant to walk that specific path. As fate might have it, I, went, I wasn't even meant to walk a path at all. I was meant to climb one. When I finally reached this conclusion that I'm going to find an adventure that's mine, I went crazy. I kept looking for, I kept looking online what, what types of adventures I can do. I kept asking my friends, people around me, what do you guys think would be an adventure? And I nearly gave up. I nearly couldn't find it. I couldn't find the thing I was looking for. It was so hard because you have to understand it was a feeling, it was a purpose. And it wasn't obvious to me, but I knew inside there was something destined out there for me. I had to find it. I just had to find it. And I nearly gave up. I nearly said, why am I living, why am I going against everybody? Why am I living so different to everybody else? Just go, go with the flow, go be like how everybody wants you to be. I almost gave up, but I didn't. And I was greatly rewarded because I was sitting one day with a group of people during that time in my life when I was looking for that thing. And I overheard this young lady who's also from the region who said that she has decided to climb Kilimanjaro over the eight break. And as soon as she said that, that fire inside me, that, that thing I knew is out there flickered. And I looked at her, the first thing I said was, isn't Kilimanjaro a fruit? And she's like, no, actually it's the highest peak in Africa and you go on an expedition and you live in a tent and you go on. And, and I loved that. The more she spoke about that, the more I felt that it was something I needed to do. And I, I, went, I left that, that meeting and I, I went home. And by the time I went home, I said, you know what? This is a great idea. It's mountaineering, it's sporty, it's adventurous, it's dangerous, it's perfect. It's a perfect thing I can drive my parents insane and also go on an adventure. It's amazing. But of course, being a Saudi girl, I was hesitant to actually go. I was nervous. Please remember, this is way before it became cool to do these things. And I decided, okay, I'm going to pretend. I'm going to tell people I'm going to climb this mountain because I want to, I want to see the reaction. And that was the best thing I did. I walked around telling people, ah, I'm going to climb uh, Kilimanjaro over the uh, break. And people's reaction to that was the final push I needed to cement the idea in my heart and mind. Because it was pointed out to me that I can't possibly climb that mountain because I'm a Saudi woman. That was it.
That was the fire that lit up my soul. It enraged me that the color of my passport dictated my capability. Who are they to tell me what I can and cannot do? So I decided then and there that I'm going to prove myself right and the stereotype wrong. But of course, being a Saudi woman in that era, it wasn't enough to have a dream. I still needed the conviction to fight for what I wanted, the strength to be scrutinized and not be phased, and the courage to ask my father. Luckily, we weren't in the same city at the time. I was here, he was back home. And I remember holding that phone and before even calling him, I hesitated so many times to even call him and tell him what I wanted. And again, I nearly gave up. Again, I said, what are you doing? You are insane. You want to go climb a mountain? Your dad's gonna think you're nuts. Don't do this. But once again, that fire in me told me, you believe in a bold life? Go after it. And I called my father. As soon as I called, as soon as he picked up, him knowing me so well, as soon as I said, hi, daddy, he said, uh, you're up to something. What's up? What did you do? Do you want money? You're up to something. And he knows me so well. I said, you know, dad, um, actually, you're right on one thing. I do need a little bit of money. I've been good. I do need a little bit of money. And the reason why is because, and I took a deep breath, I want to climb the highest peak in Africa. And it's Kiliman in Kilimanjaro. It's in Tanzania. It's called Kilimanjaro. No, it's not a fruit. And I went on and on like a broken Wikipedia page, giving him all of the information I memorized. I had like a little paper. Because deep down inside, I knew his answer wouldn't be very positive. I knew it. So obviously, being human, I had to stop to take a breath. And when I stopped to take that breath, I heard it. He just said, no, Habibti, no. It was the quietest, loudest noise I ever heard in my life. He just said, no. Not wanting to cross any lines, not wanting to be in insulting in any way. I adore my father. I respect him immensely. I said, OK, Dad. So I hung up, went home, and couldn't sleep. That small, tiny word grew in my mind, and it swelled till it had fangs, and it was clawing at my soul. It drove me crazy that the same man that taught me that I could dream, dream anything I wanted is telling me no. And I know it came out of love. I know it came out of fear for my safety. I know all of these things. But I also know if I was Muhammad, my brother, the response would have been a little bit different. So I couldn't sleep that night and I decided to put my thoughts into a letter, which is an email, a modern day letter. I never had any intention of sending it, but I just wanted to put my thoughts in it. And in that email, I threw every single thing my father taught me straight at him. Poor man, he had, he had no idea what's coming. I threw every single thing straight at him. I told him, Dad, you are the one that made me believe that I can achieve wonders. You are the one that made me believe that I can reach for the stars. I can fly as high as I want. And now you're telling me only as far as your gender allows. I know it's out of love, Daddy, but if I was Muhammad, you would have dropped him to the airport. This is what my soul wants. I need this. Please understand. Long, long email. It, was, it took me forever to write. And finally, I decided it was good enough to send him with in, enough political correctness as possible. And I had my finger on the send button, and I absolutely froze. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been on I had 14 expeditions across seven continents. I've seen horrible things. I've seen amazing things in climbing. I've seen death. I've feared so many things on all my expeditions. Having my finger on that email was one of the scariest moments of my life because of everything that came, would come after. But again, that voice inside me screamed, this is what you want. Go. Ask for it. That passion in me did not let me push the second button, which is canceling the email. Finally, took a deep breath. I pressed send. Now, I'd like to skew the truth a little bit so that I look really cool. But the truth is, uh, I couldn't sleep either after sending that email. I was so nervous. I said, my dad is going to send my brother, and he's going to put a bow in my